Needless to say, it's a great honor and a privilege to be speaking at in an Institute of Science. Friends, today's topic is born to win. Ever since I get this topic, I have been thinking about the topic itself, especially about the title, how can one say one is born to win? If you remember the prophetic lines of Shakespeare, he says, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thirst upon them. Am I trying to contradict William Shakespeare, the great bard, by suggesting we are born great or we are born to win? How many of you think we are really born to win? Could you raise your hands if you are in agreement that yes, we are really and truly born to win? Or you think no, we are not born to win, maybe we can live to win. But I see some of our hands. Those who are for the first yes, I am with you Mr. Gupta, we are born to win. Oh, I have three persons supporting me here. That's motivating a motivational speaker. But only three, only three, not more. What others think? Yes. Condition. There is a condition. You're referring to some kind of implication. No. You won't let the speaker go away and make a statement that to at in the Institute of Science. No. You have a thinking hat on. All right. Yes, young ladies, what do you think? Are we born to win? Are we born to win? One one sentence answer. Because I don't want to deliver a very learned talk here today, though I am addressing all learned people. Yes, one sentence. It's a chance. It's, it's perhaps a chance that catapults one to greatness. Winning, okay. Chance coupled with hard work. Yes, you are raising your hand. Yes, please. You are born to win if you think life is a battle. Okay. Else there is no question of winning. Okay. Yes, most of us or many of us would agree here, life is nothing sort of a battle, my friends. Life is nothing sort of a battle because battle is a matter of unpredictability. No, you can't be very sure about the outcome in a battle. And that way, if you take this idea forward, Yes, I will have to agree and accept that yes, life is more or less a battle, my friends. Not necessarily in a very technical sense. Not in a very technical sense. Yes. Friends, right at the time when you were conceived in your mother's home, just as when I was conceived in my mother's home, the battle is started, my friend. The battle is started. You had to defeat. And in order to defeat, you have to win. It was a question of a choice, not a chance. The one which won, the one which resulted in your birth and my birth was a victor, was a winner. What do you think now if we go by this? Don't you feel that? Yes, the fact that you were born, the fact that you were conceived in mother's womb and that was only after defeating. Don't you think you were born? Don't you think you're a born winner? Now, your mind is a bunch of questions. I, I can see that. Let large in your face. Some of you might be thinking, Mr. Gupta, let's accept what you say. Since you have referred to some research, some statistics, it could be difficult for us to contradict. Let's accept that, especially when you are speaking at Indian Institute of Science where research is given such a premium of importance. But, if man is really born to win, how come most of the time we face challenges, most of the time we face vicissitudes, most of the time we don't succeed in the small, small endeavors of life? 
becomes a relevant point? In other words, the question is, if we are born to win, as I have been claiming right from the time I came to the stage, how come we stop, we stop winning in life? Why we are not winning? And let me tell you, my friends, human heart loves to win. Every time you succeed in whatever you do, you are happy. Your joy knows no bounds. No matter what be the challenge, anywhere. I was told by the chairman that there was a presentation. Those who made the presentation, if she or he made a good presentation, must have friend to learn it. Yes, sir. I don't know who made the presentation today, but then there is always a sense of joy, there is always a sense of rejuvenation every time you succeed, every time you win in life, my friends. That's primarily because we are born to win. We are born to win. But how long can I go on telling we are born to win? Unless and until I justify, why don't we win? Why don't we succeed? Why don't we achieve what we aspire to achieve? And the million dollar question today remains, how will we be winning? How will we be overcoming the stumbling blocks which may crop up from time to time, which does happen? Yes, no. That's going to be the most important point today. If you interact with some of your friends when you go at night or in the evening, many of your friends will say, yeah, my time is not good. I am telling you what people say. My time has not come. I am biding for my time. It's just a question of a few more months. Majority of people tell me, believe me, I am here to tell you today which contradicts this kind of statement and that is this is your time my friends this is your time let me ask you a question when were you born 1980 okay why was someone born in 1980 in the 21st century we have had so many centuries yes or no we have had many emperors we have had many rulers we have, we have had many great men. I would have been the happiest person to be born in 6th century BC when Gautam Buddha was there in Bihar. I would have been the happiest person to have surrendered unto him. That did not happen. Why did not happen, my friends? Why did it not happen? When Akbar was ruling India, why I was not born at that point of time? When, he do, when India was really under the British Raj, why was I not born then, my friends? How come I was born in India? How come I was born where I was born? Friends, you must realize, you must understand one thing for sure today, and that is the time you were born in is your time. It's not just a matter of chance. It was the will of destiny. It was the will of the Lord. It was the manifestation of God. Everything has been planned, my friends. Everything has been planned. Everything that happens in your life is the outcome of some design, outcome of some plan. That's why you were born at a particular point of time and therefore you must begin. You must begin understanding one thing very clearly that this is your time. This is your time and this is the best time. Your best time will not begin when you leave IISC. The best time is now. It's your time. You must begin with this. Believe and then you will realize that you are certainly born to win. You are certainly born to win because you are suspending the future prospect and you are also not getting back into the past. Lord Krishna has a point when he says in the Bhagavad Gita, what we are today, what we are today is the result of what we did yesterday. 
He goes on to say, what we will be tomorrow depends on what we do today. But that will begin only when you believe that this is the best time for you. Then only you can be all for the present. No. The mind loves to dwell on what is past and what is future. What do we miss, my friends? What is now? So, time for you. It's time for you. Now, there is something called existential reality or empirical reality. We have two different schools in philosophy, rationalism and empiricism. Empiricism is, is all about what you can see with your naked eyes, all that you can perceive. Those who, who are oriented towards research, they will always go for empiricism because they want to verify everything. They will say, no, let me verify, let me be doubly sure of what you say. Some certain amount of objectivity is needed, my friends. So, once you believe, once you get convinced of the fact that this is your time or this is the best time for you, you must also accept the empirical reality, the existential reality, and that is what is realistic about you. Say, for example, I was born in a small village. I was born to a family where there was no education. My parents never went to school. It's a different story that they always wanted me to study. That was my good fortune. Did anyone ask me, including God or Lord, where I had to be born? Who would be my parents? Tell me, my friends. Nobody asked me. I was born. I was born without infrastructure. I was born at a place which had no infrastructure. This is called empirical reality. This is called existential reality. You accept the truth. You accept the truth. I give you another example of empirical reality. What is your height? He start questioning, why is my height this much? Why am I not as tall as, I will say, Pachi? I don't know if you are already tall, as tall as he is, I don't know, but then, you're questioning the empirical reality. You're questioning the existential reality. You're questioning over which, you're questioning over which you had no control. Over which you have little control. Unless and until you understand this, my friends, that you have got to accept the empirical reality, you cannot believe like me that you are born to win. You are born to win. Let me give you one example. Recently, that great player retired, you know, look, there was so much of, so much of hula baloo in the nation and in the world when he had to take a retirement. And you all know who is the player I'm talking about. Who could that player be? So brilliant. Very good. All right. Now, the point is, Sachin, once upon a time, wanted to become a base baller. No? I'm not telling you. You know it already. And what his coach told him? Given your height, you cannot become a great base baller. Was he not told sternly by his coach? Yes. No. Tell me, please. He was told what did Sachin do. He believed him. He accepted this and went to become one of the best batsmen. Yes or no? Yes or no, my friends? He became one of the best batsmen in the world. This is acceptance of empirical reality, existential reality. There were two Negro girls. They are black. It was the anniversary of ma'am where they were working as servants. Lots of gifts were coming. They also got motivated. One of them got a gift, which was not too great. And the lady had a look and threw it into the dustbin. 
child and started crying. It was a humiliation, which the child could not bear. But there were two. One of them ran out. The other followed. They were running. The one was crying. And in the meantime, they found a balloon seller. A guy who was selling balloons. The way we sell balloons is different the way balloons are sold outside. They would release the balloons and then attract the children. And this is how balloons are sold. So a red balloon went up and a green balloon went up. Many children were coming and these two children were also watching. Four or five balloons went up and there was one more balloon now and that was black. And this girl who was crying for some time now said, this balloon won't go up. This balloon won't go up. Because she had thought it into her head, got it into her head, that anything that is black is despisable, is detestable, is abominable because of the ill treatment meted out to her. And the black balloon also went up and she started clapping. And then the balloon seller told the little girl, innocent girl, the balloon went up. Not because of what was outside, the balloon went up. What was inside? Friends, you need to realize it. When I'm talking about accepting existential reality, accept, ex accepting empirical reality, what matters today is not what is outside. Time is long over, my friends. Because till yesterday, we lived in an age of Juhi Chabla, hope nobody tells her what I'm telling about her. Till yesterday, we lived in an age of Juhi Chabla. Friends, today in the age of Kalpana Chabla. Do you see the transition? Do you see the transformation in our approach? No. Both are symbols. Both symbolize. Yes or no? Juhi Chabla too? So what matters is what is inside and not what is in outside. So friends, our scriptures say Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. Can anyone of you tell me the meaning? Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. Yes? Okay, what you think you will get it? Anyone else? Good. Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. The way you think similar happens. Oh, very good. Slightly better. Yes, slightly better. Yes, Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. The way you think, you become. So, my friends, who decides for you? Not the rest me. Who decides? To be precise. Thought, thought, the way you think, the way you think you become, the way you think you become. No, I did not know how to speak English. But then I kept on thinking, kept on thinking. Can, can it happen that I started speaking only this language? No. Many of my friends, you know, they are selling uh, vegetables, they are selling tea. Well, that, that was the kind of friend circle I come from. I don't come from an elite background. It's God's wish and will that I'm speaking at Indian Institute of Science today and I also have the privilege of speaking in European universities. It's all God's grace. Because I believe what Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Sarvadharmana paritajya ma mekam sharanam vraj aham dwa sarva pape vyo mokchishyami ma sucha. Lord Krishna says, whatever be your religion, leave that aside and come unto me. Come unto me, surrender unto me and I'll redeem you, I'll take care of you. So friends, you can be aware also when, when things go wrong, when you don't see the light either at the end of the tunnel or anywhere. That's also the time for you friends to send unto someone. To have faith and to have belief. Because the way you think you become is very, very important. Today, our left brain is always active. Even when you are listening, you are calculating, you are thinking, you know. And most of the time, the thoughts which have come are opposite to what is being said. No? You are saying, oh, Mark Gupta is telling, no? 
is something else. It's not that. It's different. How can he say this? How can he say that? No, I'm going to counter him. No. Left brain, left brain. We are the prisoners of the left brain, my friends. We are all victims of the left brain syndrome. Time has come for you to think of the right brain, my friends. A British scientist has proved that even a bird makes its nest only because of emotion. Only because of emotion. And you know, the emotion comes when your right brain is active. Friends, I want you to come out of the left brain. I want you to come out of the left brain. Start believing. Start believing in yourself from today. How fortunate each one of you, my friends, that you are studying at Indian Institute of Science. How blessed you are. India is a country of timid population. All those who are born in this country are not able to survive. They don't survive. And all those who survive, they don't go to schools. And all those who go to schools, they never pass out from those schools. And all those who pass out, they don't go to college. And all those who go to college, never go to technical institutions. And all those who go to technical institutions may not come to Indian What do you say, my friends? Are you proud of your achievement? Are you proud of that or not, my friends? Because the Holy Bible says, what you will get in life depends on your focus. On your focus. No. Where is your focus? Is for each one of you to find out, my friends. I'm growing every day, primarily because of my focus. Every day I bow my head to the Lord. Your Lord could be anyone. You don't have to have my Lord as your Lord. Certainly not. Certainly not. It's not the strength, it's not the power of the Lord per se that makes all the difference, my friends. It's the power of the belief, is the conviction with which you believe in your Lord, makes your Lord, makes your God powerful. Yes or no? Tell me. If you read the Holy Quran, it says, Nasr min Allah fatihun kareem. Nasr min Allah fatihun kareem. Allah Ta'ala gives victory to those who work for the right cause. So all that you need to do, my friends, is to decide that the cause you're working for is right. And how do you know whether a cause is right or wrong? Many, many students ask me, sir, how to decide whether the cause is right or wrong? No. See the interest of majority. Or remember what Vivekanand used to say. They alone live who live for others. They alone live who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive, friends. It's a great, great fortune that you're born as a human being. Leave an indelible imprint behind you. There are many students who might come to Indian Institute of Science, but some become immortal. Some would be remembered even after they go. Today you have an I card issued by your Department of Management or Indian Institute of Science. Yes or no? Yes or no? You have. Can you, can you do something? Can you think of achieving something in life so that tomorrow Indian Institute of Science, Department of Management in particular, is compelled to keep your photograph. Just now, Sir was telling me that many of the students who passed out from here, they are in all good corporate sectors and government sectors. So today, they have a new identity. So friends, you have to change the way you think and life will change. Think, change, lift, lift your thought and you'll live your life. It's as simple as that. And all this is proven. All this is proven, my friends.